All right, hello wine drinking people. Today is Friday, the 14th of August. Getting ready to take down some St. Julian and St. Estephe, part of our, uh, well, scientific work we're doing here at the Wine Watch, just like this tasting, which is next Friday night. You know, when we hit a subject, we hit it hard, and we've got our super Syrah tasting coming up, and then a week after that, we've got our Aussie Shiraz tasting coming up. So, you know, just for those of you that want to study a subject, we let you continue on with that subject. Usually, uh, we'll do two or three tastings of the same genre uh, in the over the course of the month so you can get, you know, some good information and, you know, some good palate recognition on these wines. And Syrah is one of the few grape varietals that you can turn into a high-quality wine all by itself. It doesn't need any company at all, although it does make great blends. These are going to be all Syrah Shiraz, the same grape varietal, that's right. And uh, Syrah is a grape that, well, many have speculated about the origin of it. It's a very old grape. Some people thought it came from Persia. There's a name of a province there called Shiraz. And, you know, there's other uh, speculation and stories about Syrah, but, you know, Science today is pretty exact, you know. And in 1999, through DNA profiling, they found Syrah to be a derivative, an offspring of two different grape varietals uh, from southeastern France. And um, they're Derif and uh, Mondeuse Blanche, two grapes most people have never heard of. But uh, that's the way, you know, it happened. The two grape vines, uh, they get together and the next thing you know, a new grape comes out. And Syrah, um, well, it's an old grape. Like I said, Petite Syrah, very similar. But that is, um, well, it's a synonym for Derif. And also, it was made from Syrah and Pillar Sin, which dates back to 1880. Uh, that grape varietal, but very different. And Syrah, well, you can grow it in all different parts of the world. We're going to have, of course, the two most famous regions in France, Hermitage and Cote Roti. The difference here is Cote Roti, they can co-ferment a little Viognier, a white grape varietal, yes, with the Syrah. And the white grape, the acidity that's very high in the Viognier helps to fix the color. So you'd think that the white grape would make it less uh, dark. No, actually it makes it darker. So uh, kind of interesting phenomenon. Well, we've got Syrah from all over the world. That's right, they do great Syrah in Italy. This Le Macchiole Scrio, 100% Syrah from Tuscany. Absolutely outstanding. Hey, you know, the United States, we got the big guns. We're going to put one Syrah in there from the U.S. They make great Syrah here. Pax, a uh, great Rhone-style producer here. And then Oregon, that's right. And, uh, well, this is uh, actually Cayuse, which um, most people consider them Washington State. But um, the In the Rocks AVA, most of that is in actually Oregon. A third of all of uh, that uh, area is Oregon. Some of it is Washington State. And then we've got one from the Cafayette Valley in Argentina. That's right. I was just in Argentina. They do some great Syrah there. And, of course, it wouldn't be a Syrah. Shiraz tasting without Shiraz from Australia, mate. So we've got an incredible lineup of Shiraz and a dessert Syrah. Uh, port style wine, Black Bart from Stagecoach Vineyard. Man, this should be an outstanding taste. I'm going to find a Syrah Rosé or maybe a sparkling Shiraz also to start. And uh, hey, you know, the lineup here is just a, you know, it's just an outline. You know, you're always going to get extra at one of our high end wine watch tastings. And that's just exactly what this is. So check it out. Some of the greatest Shiraz made on the planet Earth on Friday here at the store, the 21st of August. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.